No doubt you've heard of Google's Gemini by now and possibly the fallout too. Google Gemini has in a matter of days gone from hyped OpenAI killer to controversy about some of the claims made and the sleight of hand used in their slick video presentations. The headlines really haven't been too positive. This article even parodies the situation describing the whole thing as a prank. And I'm sure some people at Google would love to now come out and say it was a big prank. Well, in this video, we'll look at exactly what it is, how much of the video and claims were real, is it any kind of threat to OpenAI, or yet another big AI claim that fails to land. And at the end of all of this, what was the fallout? So first of all, what is it? It is a multimodal AI from Google's DeepMind named Gemini. It's been teased as far back as the Google I.O. keynote on May the 10th, 2023 described as a successor to their Palm 2 model. It was officially announced on December the 6th, 2023 to a great deal of fanfare. Looking at their white paper, you can see an interesting example of Gemini assisting with a physics student's problem and it can interpret the handwriting and correct their working. Let's have a look at how it works at a high level. Traditionally, multimodal models are created by stitching together text-only, vision-only and audio-only models in a suboptimal way at a secondary stage. Gemini is the multimodal from the ground up, so it can seamlessly have a conversation across modalities and give you the best possible response. Gemini is our largest and most capable model. It means that Gemini can understand the world around us in the way that we do. The key word to remember here is multimodal. Think of it as a bit like you and I being multi-sensory. We can touch, feel, hear, etc. Well, this AI can take image, video, audio, text, including handwritten text, and work with it. As they mentioned, this is not something completely new. OpenAI's GPT-4, for example, is multimodal, but they talk about a much more foundational multimodality rather than a surface-level stitching together of models. Sundar Pichai, Alphabet CEO, calls this our most capable and general model yet, with state-of-the-art performance across many leading benchmarks. Now, if we look at the white paper associated with Gemini, we can see that it says evaluation on a broad range of benchmarks shows that our most capable Gemini Ultra model advances the state of the art in 30 of 32 of these benchmarks, notably being the first model to achieve human expert performance on the well-studied exam benchmark MMLU. So these are some pretty bold claims. Now, before we look at some of the purported performance benchmark claims, let's have a look at the slick video demonstration that they put out, which caused a lot of the backlash. Tell me what you see. I see you placing a piece of paper on the table. I see a squiggly line. What about now? The contour lines are smooth and flowing, with no sharp angles or jagged edges. It looks like a bird to me. Hmm, what if I add this? The bird is swimming in the water. It has a long neck and beak. It is a duck. Yes. A duck is a type of waterfowl in the family Anatidae. Ducks are closely related to geese and swans. The duck appears to be blue. This is not a common color for ducks. However, there are some breeds of blue ducks. These are typically not as common as other duck breeds. It is more common for ducks to be brown, black, or white. Are you sure? What the quack? I was just talking about a blue duck, and now you're holding one. It looks like blue ducks are more common than I thought. Would this float? I'm not sure what material it's made of, but it looks like it might be rubber or plastic. What if I tell you it's making a squeaking sound? Oh, if it's squeaking, it's definitely going to float. Hmm, nice. It is a rubber duck. It is made of a material that is less dense than water. Can you teach me how to say this in a different language? And give me a few options. Ooh, can you explain how to pronounce the Mandarin one? Is it Yatsu? Yatsu. All right, as I mentioned, this video was controversial and we're going to dig into why it was controversial shortly. But first, let's take a look at some of the purported performance characteristics, especially compared to OpenAI's GPT-4. So in this table from the white paper, you can see that Gemini Ultra performance just blows away a lot of the competition. You can see the numbers in blue are the ones where Gemini Ultra does better than, say, GPT-4. You can see in many of these cases, that's what happens. So MMLU and GSM8K, the math problem, these are different types of problems. And these are the evaluation strategies that were used to test these different models. And as you can see, based on this table, it looks like an overwhelming win for Gemini Ultra. But unfortunately, it's not quite as simple as that. And even this has come in for major criticism, which we'll get into shortly. So a little more about what Gemini actually is. So far, we have the main promotional website, but we have a much more detailed detailed blog post, a blog post accompanying the video, and a white paper. I'll link to all of these below so you can explore further. Now Gemini comes in three flavors. Gemini Ultra, this is the big one, the flagship, 
This is the one with the standout results for complex tasks. You have Gemini Pro, which is targeted for performance and deployability at scale. You have Gemini Nano, a light model, which is designed for use on mobile devices like Pixel Pro 8. Nano is further split into two categories, Nano 1 with 1.8 billion parameters and Nano 2 with 3.25 billion parameters. This lower level split is useful depending on the different types of devices that you have. So how can you get your hands on and try Gemini? Well, the simplest way is to probably head on over to Google Bard and it is now using Gemini Pro, albeit not likely with its full capabilities. Another way is if you can get access to a Pixel 8 Pro phone, which you can use for AI suggested text replies within WhatsApp. And the last way to use Gemini is on Google Cloud using their Vertex AI product. Let me know in the comments if you intend to use this. I'll be interested to hear about your experience. So how did the market react to the Gemini announcement? Well, at first there was some degree of excitement and you can see that the share price kind of peaks around there, which is around the time of the announcement and then sort of steadily declines afterwards. And that was because there were all kinds of reports about the demo being fake, Google lying, but the truth is always a bit more nuanced. Google didn't exactly lie. They stitched and edited things in a way that messed with the timelines without hiding it. It was there in the small print. But how many people read the small print? Well, it turns out that on the internet, quite a few people do. And that small print was in the form of a blog post attached to the video. And the slick video really was the first issue. It looks like the video is playing in real time and the AI is detecting what is happening and working alongside you a bit like a human would. In reality, the AI was fed stills along with prompts and hints as mentioned in the accompanying blog. You can see in the developer blog, they go into a lot more detail about the hints and prompts provided to Gemini. This suddenly doesn't look quite so impressive. It's not a lie, slightly misleading, but impressive, much less so. The next area that drew criticism was the benchmarks used for comparison. You can see in this Y Combinator forum discussion about the metrics, the comments are particularly amusing. Someone suggesting a prompt to construct a table of metrics, which makes them look good. So looking at the report, you can see how different task types along the left and how they scored using which metric on the right. You can see firstly that if you want to compare Ultra with Pro, in the case of the MMLU, it is compared using chain of thought with 32 samples. V's Pro, which is using chain of thought with eight samples. If you wanted to compare Pro to GPT-4, well, again, you have different evaluation metrics. By the way, COT here refers to chain of thought. MAJ1 refers to majority of one. And you have similar problems comparing Ultra or Pro to GPT-4. They also separately report on multimodal results. Now these results are very impressive, but only if you look at Ultra and this leads to the next complaint. It's not yet available for you and I to use or even for corporations to use. This means that they are comparing a product which is not available, still in the works, with products that have been out for some time. To be meaningful, it should have been compared to what other companies like OpenAI have in the works, which is of course not possible. At the very least, to be meaningful, they should compare what they will release now with what is already available. But it seems that they were too excited to announce the benchmark numbers of Ultra. They mentioned that it will be available in early 2024 here, and it is now in preview. Not entirely sure how you sign up for the preview since you can see a button for Nano Preview, but not for Ultra. Let me know in the comments if you know how or if you're already on the preview. Now, in terms of the fallout, we've talked about the market reacting and that being reflected in the share price also. It's also reputationally pretty embarrassing. In this article, it mentions that a spokesperson reached out to TechCrunch asking them to remove the word fake from this article. If you look at the comments on forums like Reddit, they're also pretty negative. And Twitter also doesn't look too good and you have negative articles like this. So all in all, Gemini definitely looks like an advance in AI, but it feels much more like an incremental improvement and not an open AI killer. These are impressive stats for sure, but when we dig a little bit deeper, we can see that we are not always comparing apples to apples. The video edit might seem like a minor thing, but it alludes to speed and synchronicity, which is an incredibly powerful factor as to what makes products useful. If your car's sat nav could not react in real time, even if it was super intelligent, it would not be much use. So it's a pretty big deal that the video was heavily edited. The benchmarks, whilst impressive, are a little hard to compare in all cases. Furthermore, the most impressive results are for Ultra, which is not available for anyone to actually use. So to me, this is just another minor calendar entry in the AI arms race. Was I blown away? No, I wasn't. Far from it. One important lesson, I think, is that overhyping your products targeted at this very technical audience is a very risky strategy and will likely do more harm than good. There are a lot of people out there who will pick apart your claims. I actually think that they had some good claims to put forward, but with this glitzy video and the big launch, they actually made it look worse. And then having to go back and explain or being defensive, I don't really think that's a good look for Google DeepMind. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you don't want to be the last to know about important AI tech and programming news, make sure you hit subscribe. Thank you for watching.